The Toyota SW20 MR2 debuted in 1989 in Japan and in 1990 in the US and Canada. It's probably best known for its Ferrari derived styling, its tendency to snap oversteer, and also that it's the little brother to the JZA80 Toyota Supra. I bought this car for all the money that I had back a little over three years ago now and it's proved to be the best bad financial decision that I've ever made. With the vast amounts of knowledge out there about JDM car culture, uh, the SW20 really allowed me to kind of focus down to one aspect of the car community and really uh, learn that before I branched out and became fully involved. Uh, and then I was able to hold my own in the JDM car scene. I'll go through my own history in another video, but basically I grew up around a lot of American muscle and the idea of a turbocharger was strictly reserved to those fancy imports. Uh, and the learning curve to move from a naturally aspirated V8 to a turbocharged four-cylinder was uh, something that just made me feel like I was stuck in the first half of Tokyo Drift, just unable to learn uh, or appreciate what really made them so special. The SW20 really came along at the perfect time. I had enough money, and being already familiar with Toyota reliability, it just seemed like the next logical step. I had done my research, so I wasn't as green as I previously was, but there was one thing that I really wasn't prepared for. Turbo lag. <laughs> the car I bought, the SW20, has a 2 liter uh, turbocharged 3S GTE. It's a third generation backed by a 5 speed manual and a limited slip differential. The car is a hard top and is original red. And when I bought it, I was expecting a basic 4 cylinder. Uh, with maybe a little bit more get up and go because of the turbocharger, but I never really expected what I got, which was an absolute bucking horse of an engine. Uh, it loved RPMs and it slingshotted itself after about 3000 RPM in the same way that I heard people talk about old Widowmaker Porsche 930s. Of course, turbo lag wasn't the only new thing I experienced. The SW20 held a lot of firsts for me. Specifically, uh, it was my first right-hand drive car, it was my first mid-engine car, and it was also my first manual car that I'd ever personally owned. Anyone who tells you that right-hand drive is an experience that you need to really practice at or that it takes a lot of energy or a lot of commitment is lying to you. And if you're looking to learn manual, I found that the SW20 is actually an extremely forgiving car, and it has enough torque where you're not going to really bog the car off the line if you're starting on a flat surface. Outside of the car, the experience of being able to join forums, Facebook groups, being able to make friends within that specific car community, and even make videos like this one talking about it, are all experiences in themselves that... I'm so grateful for and I urge anyone who is looking to own a JDM car and join a car community to consider the SW20 MR2 or any MR2 in general for that case. If the stigma around the snappy mid-engine design that's known for sending the inexperienced flying into trees doesn't phase you and you're willing to really learn the car before you get yourself into a situation that you may lose it, I'd say buy one. Many people who aren't willing to buy such a car are really falling prey to the fear spread by a lot of automotive journalists who never wanted the MR2 to exist in the first place. The Ralph Naders of the world would rather use a car to push their own agenda than to actually see the model continue. The positive outcome we see through this, though, is that MR2 prices are staying relatively low. Taking into consideration the rising of prices in the JDM enthusiast market in North America, the SW20 MR2 can be had for pennies on the dollar uh, in comparison to its counterparts like the Mazda RX-7, the Nissan Skyline, and even Toyota's own Supra. Uh, barring the hate though, the SW20 really is a phenomenal car, and for that reason I am calling it an attainable dream car. I know I just sat here and gave the car a lot of praise, and it's definitely deserving of that, but no car comes without its quirks. So. In my next video, I'm going to be talking about the five things I love and the five things I hate about my SW20 MR2, so I hope you stick around for that. I'm Nick, and if you're new to the Bayshore Boys channel, which you probably are, I'm from Newfoundland, Canada, and I love Japanese car culture. I've been involved in the scene now for a couple of years with my SW20 MR2, like I talked about today.
my supercharged AW11, which I'm going to talk about in some future videos that are upcoming, and two other JDM legends that I have yet to reveal. But stay tuned, please give this video a like, and subscribe if you're new. Thanks.